What's going on, y'all? Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 8, Episode 10, Trouble on the Family Tree or in the Family Tree, whatever. This episode, like, y'all know how I really record my stuff. I record during the commercial breaks and stuff like that. And so I can get it out quick. A bitch, I ain't even do that. I ain't, because it really wasn't much. And it was a cute episode, but it was enough to keep my attention. I'm not going to say that it was boring or whatever, but it had its moments. But it was... It, it, it really didn't give me nothing. It really didn't give me nothing. So if this review was short, y'all understand why I'm telling it from the offset. The reason why. Um, once again, thank everybody for the birthday wishes. Shout out to the Ghetto View and um, you know, Spill It Boy and everybody else who had birthdays this past weekend, this past week or whatever. I hope you guys had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful birthday, and I hope everybody else whose birthday's coming up have a wonderful one too. Enjoy it, live it to the fullest, and all that bullshit. You know. So hey. Let's get into this review. So, you know, basically, we get this story. They throw it in there with Candy and Mama Joyce. Mama Joyce is back on the scene. Candy, so what you gonna do with the baby? You gonna do this to the room and all this stuff? Candy about to give birth. Well, she's at the end of her pregnancy, you know, and she's had yet to, you know, decide what to do with the uh baby room and all that stuff so she waited to the last minute to get that done and that's what they was going to shop for and in the midst of that mama joyce brings up what's going on between you and phaedra y'all need to get that shit together do you want me to go down there and talk to her i was like nah mama joyce don't say nothing we don't need you interfering but of course leave it to mama joyce she goes down there and talks to Phaedra. Child, they had Phaedra up in her office making it seem like she was really doing some work. I said, yes, making it look like you're doing some work. You better look like them, look, do them cases and shit. You know, had her little sister in there, had the paperwork. I said, all right, Phaedra, I see you. We seeing more of her in her office this season. I was like, all right, I like that. And then another assistant come in and was like, so Phaedra, you got um somebody here to see you. Who? Um, Miss Joyce. Phaedra was like, I wanted her to say, the fuck this bitch want? <laughs> but Phaedra wasn't going to do that. Because Phaedra was like, shit, the last time she came up here, you know, she she had a little attitude because it was Phaedra who introduced Todd and Candy together. And then she, you know, Mama Joyce was like, two big head ass people, little body, big head ass people shouldn't be together and all this shit. And, you know, she was in her feelings over that. But, basically, um, you know, Mama Joyce came in. It was real awkward. And I'm like, Mama Joyce, you came to see her, so you wait for her to talk to you because ain't nobody really say nothing. They just said, hey, how you doing? And basically, you know, Mama Joyce put it out there. You know, you can call it meddling and all this stuff because that's what Mama Joyce do. She do but her, head, her, her nose and business that's really not hers. But I think this one was good in a sense because she was trying to see where they were and the reason why they got off track and basically saying, you need to go ahead and get back on track with Candy. Candy been there for you. You know, with the birth of both your kids. How your kids doing? Two and they're in, one is two and the other is in kindergarten. Oh, wow. But yeah, so Candy's having this uh, baby shower. And I want you to um help plan it like a surprise. And I was like, okay. You know, so... What started off kind of awkward came together and basically Phaedra's going to be on board to help throw an extravagant baby shower for Candy. That's cute. We're going to see how that plays out. And that was basically the end of that little situation. The other storyline that was going on is Portia. Portia and her sister Lauren. Okay. I can give a damn about Portia. And, well, I could give a damn about anybody on this cast. But, Portia. I be trying to give you a little bit of leeway, but in this scene, you didn't make yourself, you didn't really help yourself none too soon, none, you didn't help yourself at all, okay, you really didn't because basically you made, you, made yourself seem as if you were a jealous person and very insensitive, you getting in your feelings because you have some packages and work that wasn't getting done and your sister's trying to explain, you know, why certain stuff didn't happen, what needed to be done. You weren't trying to hear. So then when you come and y'all working out, first of all, did y'all see that trainer? Listen, that cock diesel motherfucker, he picked that big ass weight up. It looked like it um, probably was like 15, 20 pounds because I got um, a 15 pound weight. So we'll look around that way. And them bitches is heavy. Okay. And he put that thing down like it was light as a feather. I said, 
with one hand. He just flicked it down like it was nothing. I'm, what? Okay, wait till I get there. Girl, I can't wait. Anyway, but, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> now let me, <laughs> I be up here cracking myself up. Y'all be like, damn, bitch, it ain't even funny. I'm like, well, suck it, bitch. Ah. Anyway, he doing stuff and kick him, um, Lauren, they was supposed to work out together. I guess she didn't want to do something or didn't feel like doing something because she wasn't feeling well. And I was looking at Lauren's stomach and it looks like she's probably still in her first trimester or just about in her second, like not too far along in her second trimester. And it's understandable if you know how pregnancy works. Sometimes women get morning sickness and they just don't feel well to do a lot of things. They think they can, but then all of a sudden, it's something that's going to remind them, bitch, you pregnant, okay, go throw this up, you tired as fuck, you overexerting yourself, but they still try to soldier through. And Laura looks like the type that she going to keep on doing as much as her body allows. And Portia, she's in her feeling because of the simple fact that she feel like stuff is not getting done and, you know... She's not used to Lauren slacking off. She's not used to her being this way and her being pregnant and all this stuff. And I'm like, quit. She just came out very insensitive to her own sister, okay? I mean, being pregnant is not a fucking disease. You don't have to handle a person with kid glo kids' gloves or whatever, a woman when they're pregnant or whatever. But you do have to understand that there will be a time where her time and her the things that she do will be limited. Okay, it's going to be limited. She's going to do as much as she can. And if you give her the opportunity and stop acting like a motherfucking brat because you and your feelings because your younger sister has gotten pregnant before you, you know, like Portia said, it was like a slap in the face that her sister got pregnant before her because that's what she was trying to do when she was married. You know, that was part of the basis why her and Cordell got um divorced and all that stuff because I don't know, something like that. You know, she wanted a kid. They spent money on that. It didn't happen. And it's like she's, um, Lauren is living her dream through her, whatever, doing what she wanted to do. And it's like a slap in the face. And I'm like, Portia, you're young, okay? Yeah, you're 30-something, but you still can have that opportunity to go out and find a man, a good man, and have a child with, you know? You can't have it like you really want to. There is in vitro fertilization. There's all these different ways to help you, you know, harvest your eggs and, and have another person carry a, a surrogate or whatever it is that you need to. You can do that. There is no need to feel jealous because you still have time. Maybe Lauren is having a child with somebody that she loves and she's in a relationship with and in a good place with you don't want to just go rush out there and have child with some every time dick and harry that you don't fucking know okay bitch you out here living your life and you making up for lost time when you was out here um being married and all trapped up and conserved you know with um cordell now you loose and you're free well i ain't gonna say loose like that because some of y'all be like yeah that whole loose girl shut the fuck up now you out here being free you testing the waters you having fun for a little bit you're not ready to settle all the way down to even have a baby and baby you not ready to take care of a baby okay bitch you can barely take care of yourself i'm just saying that but you know you're not ready for that you really not so chill out and and and, and, and be more understanding to your sister She's trying to do the best that she can. Yeah, y'all can work on the communication better or whatever, but understand what she's going through. You know, at one point in time, um, Lauren did come over and talk to her about it, and they came to a little understanding and all that stuff. And, you know, they expressed their feelings, and Portia was just eating. She fucked that food up. I said, bitch, you hungry, huh? You stress eating because you jealous. But, all right, you know, get that shit out the way. That'd be all right. Fuck that. But, um... Why did I laugh like that? The next and the last part of this episode, well, we had this little cute little scene with Cynthia and Noel. You know, Cynthia was packing. She was going to go do something with Peter. And I was like, okay, fine. All I can say about that is Noel is, you know, she got the right attributes from both her parents and put them together. And she is a beautiful young girl, okay? Cynthia and Leon, y'all need to watch that because, um, yeah, them boys going to be flocking. Girls, too. But, um, uh, moving on. Kenya. Let me... Okay. I don't... 
No. I do feel a little bad for Kenya. Just a little bit. Because I understand that people want to un- know where they came from. They want to know why they were giving up. You know, and, and I say that because I be looking at this show. Y'all need to get into it. It comes on Wednesday at 8 o'clock on Oxygen. And it's called, um, Are You My Father? Find- Finding My Father. Bitch, the shit is deep. I be sitting up in here damn near in tears. Like, nah, don't don't let the t- Is he going to fight? They going to fight? Oh, my God, please let him be at the door. They came all that way, and he ain't even... He's a dick. Oh, he don't care about your sexuality. Girl, he was looking for you. That's all the emotions you're going to be going through. Okay, so, you know, maybe because I've been watching that, I just felt this... Okay, you know, I understand, you know, people want to know where they come from. Okay, but it's very... You know, you don't hear a lot about, you know, women especially giving up their kids and being total assholes you hear some stories but not so much you know and we seeing this display with kenya and you know the king want us to feel sorry for her because this has been her storyline since she came on she's always let us know that her mama basically abandoned her and didn't get two shits about her you know and her mama is really a fucked up person i'm I'm, I'm gonna just put it out there her mama is a fucked up person because the only person that's really on her the side of her mama is Aunt Lori. that's Aunt Lori's little sister and basically you know, Aunt Lori has a better um, relationship with her own niece than the mother do. The mother don't want nothing to do with it. And you know how awkward that has to feel that I can have this good of a relationship with my aunt, who is my mother's sister, but my mother, who gave birth to me, don't want to sh- do shit with me, don't want to look at me, don't want to talk to me. Like, what the fuck did I do? But I'm pretty sure her mama got other kids that she got connections with. You can't tell me no different. But... We know this, and basically they built this whole episode up to say, you know, King was going to go down to, um, back to Detroit, up to Detroit, have a little family reunion, had her dad there, and his um, wife, her stepmom, you know, she felt good about that, the fact that she came up from Houston, because, you know, she did run away from them to go back to Detroit or whatever, and to have their support, it was fine, whatever. So, they going around, they talking, they meeting up, they doing all this stuff. Kenya trying to get some more information. Um, the dad was basically putting it out there that, you know, um, their dad, their grandfather, the mama's father, basically treated him the same way that um, Kenya's mama treat her, as if he didn't exist. Like, he didn't give a fuck about him. And, you know, basically he was saying that, um, with her, her mother, the daddy did not want any more, as he called illegal kids, bitch, illegitimate bastards, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, kids out of well lot, you know? So basically that's why she got rid of, um, Kenya had no contact with her or whatever, gave her up for adoption. And then King was raised by her grandmother and her aunt Lori and all that stuff. You know, it's sad because I'm pretty sure that people, um, it's a lot of people that go through stuff like that, you know, being abandoned by a parent and, you know, not understanding where they come from and why they do the things that they do, who exactly do they look like and, you know, what's my family history. And I hate that because, like, damn, you don't know if this a disease or something is flowing through your family history or whatever that you need to be aware of or you prone to this and all this stuff. And some people do want to know just where they come from. Everybody don't, but some people do. And Kenya, I, I just, for some reason, I just don't know with Kenya if she's really doing this because of the cameras and the show or whatever or if she's really doing this because she really wants to know because with Kenya you just never really want to you just never can tell and I don't want to put it out there that she's just doing this for the cameras but I just don't know because I'm like you pulled up to your mom's house and you said out your own mouth that you already tried to contact her. You already tried to see her and she blocked you each time. She never opened up the door to you. She never responded to you or whatever. And it's never going to really change. And you thought that coming up there with the this van and the TV, uh, the cameras or whatever, you, you mean to tell me your mama look at Real Housewives of Atlanta. She look at this show. Everybody in their mama look at this bullshit, you know, so she know what's going on. She knows because I'm pretty sure family members had told her, you know, and, um, she know what you look like. She just don't want to meet you. And it's, um, it's fucked up that you have some parents out there who just don't give a damn and don't like their children. I mean, you the one that laid down and had sex unprotected. It's your fault that they're here. You know what I'm saying? So you, how dare you take it out on the child? But 
I just didn't agree with her trying to go up there with the cameras and all that stuff. And even though, you know, they tried to make it seem like the cameras weren't there, I'm pretty sure if you look out the window, you can see them cameras poking somewhere because it's fucking Kenya. You know what I'm saying? And when she said, bitch, somebody in there locked the door on me, I said, her mama locked the door. <laughs> bitch, that's fucked up. But she was like, after this day, I'm over. And I'm like, can you be done with it? This bitch don't even deserve your fucking respect and deserve you doing all this shit. Because she know what it is. And she just don't give a fuck, all right? Let that shit be done. I hope it's out your system. Move on to people who care for you. Like somebody said, tweeted me, you got to love the people who love you. Okay, and I'm like, don't force, you cannot force a person to love you because that love ain't going to be genuine, all right? That love ain't going to be real, and it ain't going to stay, all right? It's going to be fleeting, all right? So, they had a little family reunion after that. Bitch, when they pulled up, she was like, oh my God, it's finally time for the reunion. One of her cousins, a friend, whoever the fuck was up in that car going to say, but it look like ain't nobody here. I said, why do they keep shading Kenya like this? I caught it. Kim was like, they probably already inside, and they were already inside, you know, she had her grandmother, she had her cousins, and basically just about damn near everybody from her dad's side, she thought her Aunt Lori was gonna be there, but Aunt Lori wasn't there, Aunt Lori took a plate and left, bitch, okay, basically her friend Lisa had to talk to her and say, you know, she was here, but she got some disturbing news, and she had to leave, and most likely it's because Probably her sister called her and said that somebody showed up, King showed up and all this stuff. And, you know, she had to go and talk to her sister, which once again, that would have made me feel away. Like, damn, because I just don't know. I, I wouldn't want to be put in that position to know everything that's going on and I can't do anything. I can't divulge the information and be like, well, your mom is here. She's this and she's doing this and da, da, da. Because she don't want you to know anything about her. And that's the position that Aunt Lori was put in. But I just couldn't do it. But um, anyway, that was that. She was like, girl, they locked the door. You know, I seen somebody look out and lock the door on me. I was like, girl, yeah, they did. But, you know, Kenya, I hope you just leave that alone and realize that lady ain't here for you. But, um, anyway, that was the episode. <sighs> it was okay. It was a filler episode. But I think Nene's supposed to be coming up soon or whatever. I don't know. I really don't. But, um, yeah, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Look, Love and Hip Hop, the review is already done. I did it the other day. Um, I'll put it up tomorrow when I get to work or whatever. And then um, I'll see y'all later. Peace. One more thing. Tide and Phaedra. I, I know. I, I almost forgot. Phaedra went to go see Tide to see the finished product of this um, videotape or whatever, this workout tape. You know, and basically they did what they had to do. Now, see, this was what the holdup was. Tide was old money when the project was um, finished. The product wasn't finished because... Phaedra didn't give him everything that she needed, that he needed to complete it. Once she did that, that's how come the ball got rolling again. And she was like, okay, I can give you your $8,425. I was like, oh, Phaedra, I thought you said you owed him only $5,000. Ty was telling you $8,000, but really it was $8,425. But okay, she was like, you know, that's nothing to me because I got a couple of jobs. And I was like, if that's the case, why did you prolong this shit? Okay, if all you really needed to give him was this little stuff so that this can get the ball running again, y'all could have been had this done a couple of years ago. Okay, yeah, you had your baby 12 hours later after y'all did that. You still could have gave him that little stuff uh, a month or so afterwards when you recovered or whatever the fuck. You prolonged this shit because you still, you know, still could have gave that man his money long before ago. But that was what happened. And, you know, Phaedra, she was shady as fuck last week. I forgot to say that. Talking about that man up in the confessional about, you know, getting money off the couch covers and being on allowance with candy and his shows not being good or whatever or having no more shows that dried up and all this shit. I'm pretty sure Hollywood D was coming back for a third season, okay? But your man ain't had no jobs. Your man was out here ripping off people, but you talking about this man who making a living. Honestly, okay, girl. Bye-bye.